Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. We are back here in studio today. We're going to talk some sports with Val. We've took a little bit of time off here for the summer, and we are getting set to go with the fall sports season here. And uh, Val, how you doing? Doing great, Steve. I've been around to a couple golf matches so far, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the fall. I think we've got a pretty highly anticipated football season coming up, and a very big football game coming up in three weeks. Right. Which is going to be, <laughs> to be honest, in, in a hurry. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that uh, if you want to see, you might need to go to, uh, later on this afternoon, maybe, and start saving those seats. It's going to be a big one mm -hmm. as the zebras open up this year in a non-conference game versus Valley, the Bell game. It's going to be a non-conference game for the first time, so that's going to be interesting. Yeah, that'll be their home opener. In fact, the Rochester boys tennis team, their season opener is against Valley. Is it? Because uh, and because they had to fit in Lewis Cass into their schedule. So yeah, I mean, we it's going to be a little weird, but mm -hmm. uh, it's. Uh, you know, you still see a lot of Rochester Valley uh, matchups, and but uh, just not conference matchups anymore. Yeah, so we took we took some time off from talking sports with Val for the summer, and uh, we had you know some really outstanding coverage. I want to thank all of our interns and all of our sponsors as well for uh, helping us bring you uh, a lot of coverage of uh, both the Pulaski County and the Fulton County Fairs. If you didn't catch that, uh, those shows are archived. We had over a hundred hours between the two fairs, 60 hours alone here at Fulton County of uh, coverage for uh, the Fulton County Fair. So a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff there, and we really appreciate uh, all the interns for helping out and Dakota and for helping out, and again, for the sponsors. And uh, Val, you even made it over and did some interviews there at uh, the Fulton County Fair. So uh, a lot of fun stuff there. It's hard to believe that we're already talking fall sports, but the girls – uh, the girls' golf team has already uh, had two competitions. They were mm -hmm. at um, uh, Fort Wayne uh, Homestead on uh, over the weekend and, and had a... Uh, Those guys got Monday, yeah. Oh, was it on Monday? Yeah. Okay. Had a really good showing there. Um, came in eighth place out of uh, 15. 15 teams. Mm -hmm. So a really good but it showing. Was, it was the number that they put up, 354. That's a really good score for July 31st. Right. right. I mean, that's... They've had, like, what, two practices? Right, after I mean, two practices. <laughs> yeah. And that, the field in that tournament was probably as the best tournament that Rochester will play in all year. I mean, you got Homestead and Penn. Yeah. I mean, that is a who, it was a who's who of good teams in, in northern Indiana on that yeah. team. To finish eighth and shoot a three fifty four. that's a very good result. Well, did I see Penn put up a sub-300 number? I think a 294, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's for just... Nine holes, yeah. Yeah. Or a, a 294 for 18, yeah. Yeah, so that's a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, good good tournament. And then you were uh, down at uh, Pondview there, just uh, south of Star City last night, as they opened up their uh, uh, doubles match play, I guess. Yeah, the nine hole, the nine hole, the first nine hole weekday match, and they beat Pioneer one seventy to two thirty two. Now Pioneer, I mean, the four of the five players were playing their first competitive golf match in their lives, and then right. you've got, you know, the top three Rochester kids are girls who play. I'll say year round, but play a lot of golf. As long as there's not uh, a foot of snow on the ground, you probably could find one of them out on the golf course. Right. When you talk about Olivia Bailey and Ava Thomas and and Peyton Moore, and then but uh, you know uh, Lexi Hawes, the freshman, shot a 51, and I think that's if she can consistently shoot, mm -hmm. you know, in the low 50s. Boy, she's going to be a real bonus. Uh, that's going to be a real bonus to the team. Uh, unfortunately, I just only has four, so I mean everybody's got to be on every time. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, no drop score available there. Right, right. I, I think with the four that they got, uh, it's probably going to be a pretty good season for them. Yeah. So, yeah, Olivia Bailey shot a 34 last night, and that was after shooting 71 at Chestnut Hills at the Homestead Invite. I mean, as good as Olivia is, she's taken it up a notch. Yeah. Maybe even two notches since the end of last year. Yeah, and I, you know, I follow her obviously a lot over the summer and. Uh, she did really well with the with the summer tour that she was on, and right, she just she lives and breathes golf. Right, and in fact, they had a summer tour event at Chestnut Hills uh, a week and a half ago. So the last the last summer tour event of the year was at Chestnut Hills, and the first high school match of the year was at Chestnut Hills. Okay, so, and she shot seventy two at that. Yeah, so she shot seventy two and then seventy one. So it's no fluke. Yeah, yeah. So they are already underway. Um, how we're going to do this is uh, this week we're actually going to take a look back because we didn't really do a show wrapping up our spring, all RTC teams. So we're actually going to go back and, and look at those uh, today. And then uh, next week we're going to do all of our fall sports 
except for football, uh, previews. So we're going to talk boys and girls soccer. We're going to talk tennis. We're going to talk girls golf. Uh, we're going to talk volleyball. And then the following week, we're going to uh, do our football preview show as you know, all, this, all the teams will have uh, the scrimmages under their belts so that we'll have something to talk about. And then, of course, later that night, then we'll have opening night. So we're going to just kind of roll that right into uh, the first Friday night lights of the season. Hard to believe that uh, two weeks from tonight, uh, we're going to be getting ready for some football, but it is here. Yeah. It, it is here. And I uh, really got a lot to, to look forward to. So let's uh, let's take a look back here, like we said, before we go forward. Let's, uh, let's talk about our all-RTC teams. And let's start off with our girls' tennis team. And our uh, RTC Player of the Year is a sophomore from Tippecanoe Valley, Kerrigan Callahan. And what a story Kerrigan was. She was not even on the varsity as a freshman. And as a sophomore, she is our Player of the Year, and she, she earned it. Mm-hmm. With her just a lot of hard work, she's just a very – she's just a relentless player. I mean, she, she gets back every ball, and she makes you hit that extra shot. And the more shots you have to hit, the more likely you're going to commit an error – and again, she she just hustles really well around the court. She's got a very um, very unique serve from both sides, from both the deuce court and the ad court, that makes it really hard to return. So again, it's really going to be exciting to see Kerrigan uh, get better as a player. But I mean, she she worked at it. She spent um, the winter at the Warsaw Racquet Club and at the YMCA in Warsaw, and she you know her her work ethic is what really set her apart. Yeah. Uh, teammate of hers on the uh, all first team as well. Yeah, Lydia Miller. She was our RTC Player of the Year in 2022, and she made the first team again. And you know, Lydia was just a great, again, a great story about perseverance because she tore her uh, ACL during soccer season back in last October, and she was ready to go by tennis season. Again, that's if you got a bad knee, tennis isn't the yeah. <laughs> isn't the easiest sport. But boy, you know, Lydia is just a player who. Um, again, a player who really worked at it and did a great job for uh, uh, for her team. And um, yeah, I, I think uh, just a great career. You know, she'll be missed at Valley, but uh, again, one of those program builders. Uh, the other singles player was uh, the number one singles player from Rochester, Ella McCarter. Ella, Ella had a very you know again, it's hard to just judge a player on their record because she had a, a tough opponent every time out, yeah. whether it was Kerrigan Callahan or whether it was. Uh, you know, Peru or Manchester, I mean, or, or you know, she had to play, uh, you know, Ellie Baker from Northfield, lost the first set, came back and won in three. So she had a tough opponent every mm-hmm. night, and that's, that's you know, um, it can be challenging to your confidence. But I, I think Ella really, you know, stood tall. And she's a player who can play both from the baseline and at the net. Yeah. Had a pair of doubles teams, uh, the double team from Valley with Alt and Sonbachen, mm-hmm. and the uh, the doubles team from Rochester with Bailey and Bullinger. Right. Um, yeah, Lily Alt and Ella Sonbachen, you know, Lily's a senior. She's graduating, and then Ella was a you know, sophomore, so it's going to be interesting to see what, what happens next in her career if she, moves, she stays at doubles or if she moves up to singles because Ella's a very good player, um, very good, you know, with Lily and Ella, they both uh, had very quick reflexes at the net. Very good team, and then uh, boy, Olivia Bailey and Audrey Bollinger, thats was quite the team. I mean, you have Olivia who's a freshman who never played competitive tennis before, and Audrey had never played competitive tennis before either, and yet really had a nice, um, nice kind of chemistry between the two. And you know, Audrey, I mean, we've seen her play volleyball and kind of how she can dominate at the net. And it was kind of the same for tennis a little bit. I mean, she's just got quick reflexes and long reach, and so she can get to those volleys. Yeah. Honorable mention went to uh, Riley Holloway from Rochester in singles, and in doubles it was Taylor Howard and Elizabeth Weaver from Rochester. Right. Riley, um, again, Riley, a senior who had never played competitive tennis before until uh, her junior year in high school, and what a year she had. And then um, Taylor Howard and Elizabeth Weaver, you know, they're – a really good uh, combination and, you know, really strong and a, a very good kind of athletic combination at the net. Maybe a more, a more athletic uh, duo than maybe your typical number two doubles team. Yeah. All right, that's going to do it for our uh, all-RTC tennis teams. When uh, we come back, we're going to talk some golf here. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back here with more Talking Sports with Val. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. 
Here at Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trusts to appeals and guardianships, Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. Stop on by to Inyards Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyards will supply you with the most top rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyards Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574 223 4920 to see how Inyards friendly staff can help you. Pacesetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Pacesetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. Welcome back. Here we are uh, talking all RTC teams from our spring sports, and we've done the... Uh, girls tennis now we're going to talk a little boys golf and got a little bit of an opportunity here the uh golfer uh, of the year greg miller from uh, valley actually got an opportunity to uh golf with greg in a um outing that we were doing down at uh at mulberry communications and he's slight in figure about five six but uh boy he's pretty intimidating at least for me because i'm not a real good golfer but uh <laughs> It was it was very interesting yeah. uh, watching him golf and he can really hit the ball. It's unbelievable that uh, somebody that's that short can can find that kind of power. The club head speed he generates is just crazy. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, he's a very smart golfer as well. Yeah, his short game. I mean, obviously, if you're going to become a D one golfer, you got to have you know all phases of your game working. And his short game and his putting are you know outstanding. He can he can put it within five or six feet of the cup pretty much at will from 150 yards out, you know. And when you can do that, obviously you're going to have really good results. And mm -hmm. and not only that, he's he's a fun kid. I, I really enjoyed uh, you know getting the opportunity to to meet him and play around and golf with him. It was mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So of course Grant McCarter was with us, so that always you know <laughs> puts in a you know that's a little bit of a straw that stirs the drink there grant's got a, a big personality and, and he's fun and you talk about club head speed mm -hmm. jeez mm -hmm. grant can uh make that club go mm -hmm. so but uh, greg miller is uh the back-to-back -back, uh golfer of the year for us here at rtc right i mean it, it didn't take much to think about to pick <laughs> greg i mean i mean he had a couple of under par rounds he was all trc i mean he was and he was a regional qualifier on top of all that so yeah he was the one yeah. Uh, and then our others were A.J. Dig from Caston. A.J. was the uh, Hoosier North medalist. Um, another heartbreaking end of his season. For the third straight year, he just missed going to regional mm -hmm. um, as an individual. I think combined those three years, he missed going to regional by like four strokes in the three yeah. years combined. He yeah. really would have hoped for it for A.J. Even Colby Pugh, yeah. who did go to regional, said, I, w I would almost give it up to let A.J. have the chance because of how dedicated he was to the game. And, and they actually changed the rule after this year, which would have gave him an opportunity for a playoff last year, right? That would have, you know, gave him that opportunity to because he was tied for that third place spot that would have went on. Uh, no, that, that's regional going to state. Okay. We're talking about sectional going to regional. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, almost. But, yeah, I mean, and, uh, you know, shot an 86 at conference to win the conference medalist in, in brutal weather conditions. So, I mean, you look at boy, shot 86. No, that was a really good 86. And a guy who, you know, learned the game from his grandpa and, you know, played a lot at Round Barn Golf Club at Mill Creek and played a lot at Pond View and just worked and worked and worked at it. And, 
made our all RTC team. We had a Noah Riffle from Rochester, uh, all conference player. Noah is a, another kid who just loves the game. Um, has really worked on, um, you know, a, a kid who uh, isn't the biggest kid. Again, uh, again, goes to show you don't have to just overpower the ball, mm-hmm. but is a really good short game, and just as a really just complete player. Uh, the aforementioned Colby Pugh from Caston made our list. Colby, um, you know, again, what a day. He had the, basically the round of his life at Logansport at the sectional to make it to the regional after not – he didn't make the all-conference team, but he made it as a regional qualifier. What mm-hmm. a story after, you know, um, less than a year after ACL surgery. Mm-hmm. And then um, Drew Strasser from Rochester. Uh, you know, Drew was uh, one of our co-boys tennis players of the year back in the fall, and he also makes our uh, – First team for boys golf. He uh, was a uh, an all TRC player, and he was part of that Rochester team that made it to regional. And Drew is, you know, a kid who um, just kind of picked up where he left off. I mean, he, you know, very good short game. Again, a guy who doesn't overpower the ball, but just has a very good short game and is a very thoughtful player. Yeah, it's a it's a really good list there, and um, you know, I was just really impressed with that Rochester team because they really seem to kind of put things together and mm-hmm. you could just see uh, match by match the just the improvement yeah. that team had over the season. Right. And uh th- you know it's it's really going to be fun to see them moving forward. Obviously Drew Strasser graduates, but they've got a lot of guys coming back. Mm-hmm. And uh the program seems to be in really good shape with Ma- uh, you know under first year coach Mason Heidi. Yeah, and even the uh the younger kids, you know, really came along. Yeah. Uh, as well. Yeah. So. Both Mason Heidi at Rochester and Darren Parker at Valley brought a lot of juice. Mm-hmm. You know, as again, Darren, uh, first year of his second stint as coach, but yeah, brought a lot of juice to the program. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some honorable mentions that we had here for uh, for golf. You had Wes Parker from Valley. Well, let's go with Darren Parker's son. Uh, and Wes, you know, had a very, very good freshman year. Uh, I think this might be the it's the first time he made honorable mention, but I don't think it'll be the last. I think it might be the last time as well. I think he's probably going to move up to that first team. Right. Moving forward, Wes has a great potential in golf, and he's got three more years left. Had uh, J.R. McLaughlin from uh, Rochester. Yeah, I mean, boy, to, to have again, I, I like our our honorable mention team. We, we, that's a pretty tough honorable mention team. Mm-hmm. J.R. is a very very good player, um, a kid who just again a, a, not the biggest kid, but he just um, has a very good short game. Can can really move the ball around the course and get and, and get it where he wants, um, but um, he was I mean he's just right there with with Riffle and, and Strasser on that Rochester team. You had Micah Rands from Pioneer, another uh, very good young player. Yeah, freshman, um, son of the coach, son of a coach, and an All Conference player. And uh, Stephen Pugh from Culver. Yeah, Stephen, you know he's a, a kid again, son of a coach, uh, mm-hmm. and a very very good offensive lineman and a very good golfer as well. Um, Made the all-conference team, I think, uh, uh, and uh, consistently kept his score under 100, um, even in most, even in difficult weather conditions at uh, the conference, and uh, was consistently Culver's number one player. And then rounding out the honorable mention, Ethan Young from Valley. Yeah, Ethan Young had a really nice year, and is part of that depth that Valley is building in their program. And again, uh, you know, they'll miss Greg Miller, but they've got a lot coming back in the future. The, uh, you know, even though they're graduating Greg Miller, I think the uh, future of the program is very bright at Valley. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of really good golfers that uh, you know had some really good scores and some uh, really good seasons for us here this spring, and it's a you know it's a team that you could take and win a lot of tournaments with. Right, the dedication of the game that these kids have is just it's very impressive, and it's it's a step above even what it was ten fifteen years ago. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, I think that does it for uh, for golf. Anything else on golf that you want to? Bring up? Boy, I, I just, uh, like I said, Valley's program is, the future of Valley's program is bright, and I think the future of Rochester's program is really bright as well. Yeah, yeah. And it starts at the top, too. Like you mm-hmm. said, there's there's a lot of uh, good energy coming out of the coaching spots at both of those. Yeah, so. yeah. All right, let's take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk right. some. We, oh, you should also mention Winnemac won the conference, the Hoosier North Conference. So, yeah. Yeah. Want to give them a shout out, and I mean, they'll be uh, a team that will be uh, formidable. Yep. All right, we'll be right back here, and we'll talk some girls' track. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need, no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit Kriskin'sPoolsAndSpas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskin's can help you.
Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Looking for an easy way to provide custom branded products for your business, school, sports team, or fundraising event? Let the Winning Edge set up a customized web store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, sports accessories, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide you with the best style that suits you. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090 or going to our website, thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. Oh. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. Hey, welcome back here. We are talking sports with Val, and we're going to uh, move on to girls track and the uh, repeat winner again in girls track. We had a back-to-back -back winner in uh, in boys golf, and we had a back-to-back -back winner in all RTC player of the year is Kennedy Jackson of Culver. Mm -hmm. She was Kennedy Jackson of Rochester last year, but... Uh, uh, transferred to Culver and uh, still had the same results. Right, and Kennedy proved to be, you know, somebody who saves her best for the biggest meets. And she did this year 40 feet 2 inches at the regional to make it to state. And that's a, not only did she make it to state with that throw, she set the new Culver school record. Right. Broke the record of Michaela Hardy, St Hardy Stevens, yeah. her coach. Right. Who had thrown, I think, 39-11 back in about t uh, 10 years ago or so. So... Yeah, 20, 2012, 2013, I believe. No, it would have been, it 20, been later than that. It would have been 2015. Yeah, maybe? 15 okay. would have been her senior year. Okay, yeah. Yeah, same as Maddie. So, so yeah, for Kennedy to to basically be the same thrower and, and just continue to refine her her move, her her glide step, I mean, that was just a very impressive performance. Just a great a great two year career at Kennedy. She was the only area athlete to make it to state. And she was the most, I think, consistently great athlete we had in our area. And so Kennedy was just a, an obvious pick. Yep. Uh, on the uh, on the first team, uh, right. one of one we, of the... we, we, I just want to say we picked three basically three sprinters. It's yeah. so basically everybody who runs from 100 to 400, three distance runners, everybody who runs 800 to 3200, three hurdlers, three jumpers slash pole vaulters, and then three throwers, and like a whole bunch of honorable mention. And basically, we tried to fit in as many kids who are deserving as possible. For example, um, Aspen Molinar could have been a jumper slash pole vaulter. We included her in the hurdlers mm -hmm. just to want to. She was fit. good at a lot of things. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So it was. Yeah. We, we tried to fit as many good athletes in the spots as we could. We didn't yeah. want to. We didn't want to. Uh, yeah. Well, for the uh, the sprinters, you picked two uh, two pioneer kids, uh, Paula Coyala Fernandez. And Rochelle Harding, and then also uh, from Rochester, Audrey Wagner. Right. Paula, I mean, was probably the best sprinter we had in our area. She could run anything from 100 to 400, but really specialized in the 200 and the 400. And really, we have not had many area athletes be able to run the 400 in under a minute, mm -hmm. and she did that. So um, Paula just had a Paula had just had a great year, and we're looking forward to just – I was just so tickled to hear that she's going to come back to Grace College and still get a chance to maybe see her again. Yeah, I got an opportunity to uh, to watch some of her. She's been playing uh, U18 uh, FIBA mm -hmm. tournament over in uh, in uh, Europe. So mm -hmm. she is coming back, and she's going to be running track at Grace. So looking yeah. forward to that. And Rochelle Harding is another uh, girl who's very versatile. Mm -hmm. I mean, and uh, what was on that 4x400 um, team that won, uh, was it the conference or the sectional? 
Yeah, they won the conference. Um, did they, they win won. the sectional? Yeah, they, I think they did win the sectional. Well, they won the Rippy and won the Cass County. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, uh, very good results for for that team. Mm -hmm. And our other pick was Aubrey Wagner, who really just came on in, in the four hundred. And I think she can run the two hundred as well. But um, you know, she's somebody who just you can just see the confidence coming out of her, mm -hmm. going from her freshman year to her sophomore year. She is a terrific runner. And it's going to be exciting to see, uh, and, and, and really ran well in the biggest races of the year. I think she really responded well to good competition. Really excited to see what she's going to do these next two years. And we'll be going to see her on the soccer pitch coming up. Yeah. Uh, distance runners, you had uh, Chesney Miller from Valley, Zoe mm -hmm. Seward from Rochester, and Ar Araceli Ochoa from Rochester as well. Right, and we could have picked Chesney for a sprinter. We could have picked Chesney for a jumper. We chose D Chesney for distance runner. I think her best event is at 800. Mm -hmm. I was again. I was just so amazed by how well she ran the 800 at the conference after she had lost the 400. I mean, she it was a heartbreaking loss. Gwen Howard from Whitco beat her in kind of the last few meters, and she came back just a few minutes later and won the 800. That it takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of mental toughness. It takes a lot of physical toughness. Uh, it takes a lot of conditioning. Um, Chesney just is fantastic in that 800. Uh, able to get under. 230. We haven't had many area runners get under 230 yeah. and 800, and she's been able to do that. And then, you know, Zoe, um, uh, you know, she made it to state in cross country. Didn't make it to state in track this year, but as somebody who's been under 12 minutes uh, in the 3200, I mean, one of the best distance runners we've had, and I'm going to be running at the Division One level at Southern Indiana. Then Araceli Ochoa, um, really, you know, she was not too many steps behind Zoe in a lot of these races. She could run a, a 1600 in under six minutes. I think I think even another 550. So uh, it was good to see Araceli have a good, healthy year. Yeah. I mean, injuries have just plagued her throughout right. her, her running career, both cross country and track. So just great to see her out there. Yeah, for sure. Because so. we we knew she would do well. Yeah. Yeah. She just needed to stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your hurdlers uh, again, two Pioneer girls: Betty Shepard from Valley, Aspen Molinar, the freshman from Pioneer, and Blair Grigsby from Pioneer. Right, Betty Shepard made it to regional in the um, 300 hurdles. It's very unusual for a freshman to do so well in the 300 hurdles. That's usually uh, right. you need to be a junior or senior to do well because it takes a lot of uh, strength. But I mean, Betty Shepard just uh, you know she 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 enjoyed the 300 hurdles. A lot of kids don't enjoy the 300 hurdles. Yeah. So I guess she got over the mental hurdle. Yeah. And, yeah, and, two of your two of your three hundred hurdlers on this list were freshmen, right? And Aspen Molinar as well. Again, Aspen could have made it as, like we said, she could very good pole vaulter, but a uh, very good hurdler. Um, you know, um, somebody who does both the one hundred and the three hundred hurdles. Betty's more of a three hundred hurdler, but um, Aspen is is terrific as well, and has got a very bright future. And then uh, Blair Grigsby, um, again, she could have been a jumper, um, but uh, you know, is really, I mean. Uh, you know, really excelled at the uh, hurdles as well. Um, you know, a very good, uh, again, could, could run almost any event with seemingly with Blair. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like you said, a very good uh, long jumper as well. Yeah, so, yeah, long jumper as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in your jumpers and vaulters, uh, you had Kirsten Nyes and Michelle Harding from Pioneer and uh, Macy Nelson from Rochester. Kirsten Nyes has uh, cleared 5-2 in the high jump. Mm -hmm. I mean, and uh, Michelle Harding is not very far off from that, and she's also a very good long jumper as well. Right, right. Michelle went, what, 16-8 in the long jump? If you get into the 16s, you're serious. Yeah. <laughs> and you, we're paying attention to you if you're in the 16s. If you're in the, oh, if you're in the 15s, we're paying attention. But if you're in the 16s, you're seriously good. And I think she won, what, sectional? Mm -hmm. in, the, in the long jump, and that was just a phenomenal accomplishment for Michelle. I don't think we necessarily saw that coming, but didn't know it was great. And of course, yeah, like you mentioned, Kirsten, she is just a jumping jack in yeah. the high jump, and she is the best high jumper in our area by far. Yeah, really. I mean, we've we seen what she can do on the volleyball court. Yeah. I mean, she just—it's like she has springs in her shoes or something, you know. Yeah. And then uh, Macy Nelson from Rochester. You know, kudos to Macy because. They didn't even have a pit to practice on. Yeah, I mean they had a pit, but they didn't have stanchions. So mm -hmm. how do you practice? Right. So kudos to her to even be able to participate. Yeah, she really had to be resourceful this year, and again to make it. I mean, again she we could have picked her for hurdlers as well, but she, uh, again to make it to regional in the pole vault, that's why we picked her on that category. And your throwers, of course, Kennedy Jackson leading the way there from Culver, Ashlyn Wyant from Rochester. 
and uh, Melody Heisey, also from Rochester. Ashlyn Wyant is just a freshman, and she's got a very bright future ahead of her. I mean, she's thrown, I think she's thrown 80 in the discus. I think she's thrown 30 in the shot put, so just getting started. And then Melody Heisey, you know, really kind of a late comer to throwing. And, I mean, she's gone over 30-plus feet in the uh, shot put as well. Uh, she won a few meets. I mean, cons both Wyant and um, Heisey consistently scored for Rochester in the throws. And like you said, this honorable mention list, I mean, a lot of these girls, uh, you know, had very, very successful seasons as well. And uh, you could, you know, very easily stick them in any one of those slots as well. Right. Uh, we picked Taylor Schaefer. We picked McKenna from Caston, a uh, thrower, McKenna straight for, from Pioneer. Again, this was more of a general category. We didn't pick honorable mention for Specific particular events. Spots, Chloe right. Chan from Pioneer, who ran, you know, was a very, very good distance runner. Um, Katie Hutzel from Caston. Chloe was mid-distance. Mm -hmm. Katie Hutzel from Caston, very promising sprinter. Uh, Brianna Mosquita from Caston, another another good thrower. She and Taylor was Schaefer, kind of a good one-two combo. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelsey Cox from Valley, uh, thrower, um, you know, who I think was just trying it for this year for the first time as a junior. Uh, Allison Callaway from Rochester, freshman distance runner. Allie Paul from Caston, darn near made it to regional in the in the high jump. I think lost in a tiebreaker. Um, and sing the national anthem at the state championship softball game. Yes, very good job. Uh, Casey Gray from Rochester, very good sprinter. Uh, Giselle Villegas from Culver, another good sprinter. Uh, Ava Smith from Valley, good kind of sprinter, kind of mid-distance runner, uh, but mostly sprints. And Kendall Bradley from Rochester, who did just a little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, whatever was needed from her, she did and did it, you know, could run sprints, distance events, uh, whatever, whatever you need. So yeah. Kendall definitely, we wanted to recognize her. Yeah, and again, I mean, I would take that uh, that honorable mention uh, team and, and put them up against uh, a lot of very good track teams and, and probably compete very well. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of very good um, girls track athletes throughout our area this year. Absolutely. And, yeah. uh, you know, some really good success and looking forward to seeing what happens with them uh, next year as well. Mm -hmm. Anything else girls track-wise? No. Nope. All right. Let's take a quick break here, and we'll come back. We'll talk some boys track when we get back here talking sports. RTC Fiber Communications is now participating in the Fiber Gaming Network program. We are one of 30 companies nationwide to participate in this pilot program. During this pilot period, it is free for anyone in the RTC zip code areas to play and compete for up to $1,500 in cash prizes every week. You do not have to be a customer to join. To sign up, simply visit www.fibergamingnetwork.com and create a free account to get started. Are you looking to open up a new checking account for your business? Save time and money with a business checking account at First Federal Savings Bank. Every business checking account includes free instant issue debit card, free online banking, free bill pay, free mobile banking, free e-statements with online check images, free thank you gift, and we buy back your unused checks and debit cards from another institution. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. We've been with Alliance Bank since late 80s, early 90s. Worked with them on a, a new shop. They've always been competitive on any of the rates that uh, we've looked at for any financing. But I think the main key ingredient that we've stayed with Alliance Bank is because of their willingness and understanding of today's farming industry. My name's Brad Carpenter. The name of our farm is Lazy Sea Incorporated. back here we are talking sports with val wrapping up our spring all rtc teams and let's talk some boys track and leading the way is uh valley's drago right <laughs> wade jones you know i think that nickname was given to wade by wade yeah i think so yeah it's, it's, a, but, it's a fitting name though yeah I mean, not only is he you know performed like drago but he kind of looks like him a little yeah. bit as well <laughs> 
So, yeah, uh, but Drago never won the regional in the 200 meters. That's what True. separates Wade. True. And 22.07, that was, I mean, we knew he had a chance to go to state in the 200, but 22.07, that just blew us away. And mm-hmm. that's why that's why we picked him again. And that's why we picked him for this award. Um, you know, we again, continuing on, I mean, again, it's the 200 is really ideal because it's a combination of strength and speed. And again, he just explodes out of the blocks and his start out of the blocks. And again, it's something he works on with Coach Wise, who's the assistant coach there at Valley. They work on it a lot, and it's you can see the results. And but twenty two point oh seven, I don't think he'd even done that before. I mean, he'd got again. If you get under twenty three, we're paying attention to you. But if you get twenty two point oh seven, yeah, you're going to go a long way. And uh, he went on a long way in a very short way, two hundred, very short distance, two hundred meters. So to get to state, that was great. Um, again, and we we get him for one more year. So I mean, he's right. already made state twice. But uh, yeah, he got faster from his sophomore year to his junior year. Yeah. Very, very good technical sprinter. Got, got faster from the sectional to the regional, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, that's going to be uh, interesting to see how he can do here in his senior year coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had uh, in your sprinters, you also had Ryland Toloza and Nate Parker. Toloza from Pioneer and Parker, another valley. Right. When I went to that Cass County meet, like Ryland Toloza just stood out. Mm-hmm. Like, whoa, I mean, I mean, I know I'm Leighton Dot, obviously, won the uh, Star of Stars, but like Ryland Toloza was like, whoa, I. I think we had maybe underestimated him a little bit, and I think part of it was just he was injured his sophomore year and didn't have a track season. But, I mean, Ryland Toloza is as fast as anybody. I mean, mm-hmm. he is he is a big-time talent on the, both the 100 and the 200. And he, we, you could, we could have picked him for the jumpers category as well. He's a very good long jumper. Right. And then also Nate Parker from Valley. Right. Nate in the 400 was, a, I think, a regional qualifier in the 400. All the Parker brothers run the 400. They all run it really well. They talk about it. They think about how... They think about strategy in the race a lot. Nate's just the latest. Uh, your distance runners here, um, boy, that had to have been a really tough one. There was a ton of really good distance runners. Uh, started off with R.J. Karinko from Rochester. You had Leighton Dot from Pioneer and, and Destin Green from Culver. Really tough pick. <laughs> I mean, we R.J. R.J. was kind of we had to pick. R, I mean, R, R, R. R.J. was, a, was a, yeah going yeah. to state in the eight hundred. I mean, and to go run a one fifty seven at state. What a year for R.J. I mean, he. He, you know, and it was funny because he was like, you know, he hadn't run under two minutes until he got until the regional, and he was like, "Boy, I, when am I gonna?" I, I was hoping to run two, you know, under two minutes by now. And he runs one fifty eight at regional and one fifty seven at at state. I mean, just a great a great career and a kid who just got better and better and stronger and he, and and faster and just uh, uh, four years of hard work culminating in in two great races at the end of his career. Yeah, I just remember watching RJ run. We did that uh, meet against John Glenn early in the season. Of course, it was still pretty cold then, and mm-hmm. just watching him run. I mean, it's it, he just has really just fluid motion, mm-hmm. and uh, you know he's going really fast, and, and he doesn't look like he's putting out a, a ton of effort when he's doing it. Yeah, Leighton Dot was another guy who got just bigger and stronger from his freshman year to his sophomore year. He can run anything from eight hundred to thirty two hundred. He can run four hundred too. He can run the four hundred too. Yeah. He can run. He can. He's pretty versatile. I mean, he's he's down to about ten minutes, I think, in the thirty two hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, he's under four forty in the sixteen hundred. Uh, in the eight hundred, he's a very good runner as well. I mean, he's on that four by eight hundred team. Layton was just uh, it was the star of stars at the Cass County mm-hmm. meet. Great, great sophomore year for him. And then Destin Green from Culver. This was the one, I mean, to run a 437 in the 1600 at sectional. That was a stunner. I mean, he had run like 459 at conference, and he comes up with a 437. What a run for Destin. And what a what a year he had because he didn't really have anybody on the team to kind of push him. Right. And so we were just I'm, – I was just so uh, impressed by him with what he was able to do without a great, like, infrastructure within the team mm-hmm. uh, that, that's so important for a lot of these distance runners. Your hurdlers, uh, this is another really good list. You had Brady Evans from Caston, Caden Towell from Rochester, and Harrison Dunwoody from Rochester. Yeah, I mean, Brady Evans, The I mean, that was just the inspired, the 300 hurdles race at the Plymouth sectional when he gets third place by, I think, .03 seconds to get to regional. That was the inspiring moment of the year because, again, Brady, you know, he had that torn ACL. I mean, that's, you have a bad knee he suffered, and he, that needs surgery that he suffered in basketball season in um, January of 2022, I think it was. Mm-hmm. So to to come back and do that, I mean, that that just was a, one of the inspiring moments of the year. Uh, had a very good uh, year, ran, I think, f- um, 
I think ran in the 44s. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, just very good. And then Caden Towell from Rochester, a guy who was equally good in both the 110s and the 300s. And then Harrison Dudwood, he, he really came on at the end of the year. He was one of those guys where I don't think we were talking about him that much at the start of the year when we, we did the John Glenn meet. But, boy, by the end of the year, he was he was a force, and he's, we got him for three more years. That's going to be um, interesting to see how well he improves, especially in the 110 hurdles. Uh, in your uh, jumpers, uh, you had Eric Burke from Valley, and, you know, he had some big shoes to fill, but he also had a uh, really good uh, mentor to look up to in oh. Dawson Perkins. Yeah. Uh, Austin Brook from Pioneer and uh, Isaac Nickel from Pioneer as well. Eric Burke was the only high jumper in our area who went six feet this year, so that was uh, a, that was a no doubt about a pick. Obviously, just in a very tough conference with uh, the Hecker kid from Manchester, who's I think going to Purdue Fort Wayne. I mean, that was just <laughs> mm-hmm. tough to have to go up against him every time. But Eric had a great year. And then Austin Brook, I think he was honorable mention in cross country. He was honorable mention in swimming, and now he's on our first team for track. Uh, very good uh, high jumper as well. I mean, we could have picked him for hurdlers as well, almost picked him. And then Isaac Nickel was a, another guy who had a very good year as well. Yeah. Uh, just, I think Isaac's, what, a sophomore? Yeah, I believe so. So, yeah, we will yeah. have him for a couple more years. Uh, in your throwers, this is another really good list. You got Dalton Albert from Valley, uh, Devin Burkett, and Ben Lee from Culver. Right. Uh, Dalton's a junior. Devin and Ben are both seniors. Um, Dalton um, and... Devin both made it to regional in the um, shot shot put, and Ben um, Ben was right. I mean, Burkett and Lee kind of went back and forth all year. I mean, and kind of a, I think had a kind of a nice healthy competition within the team there at Culver. Two very good throwers, uh, very good seniors who were uh, you know good uh, good pieces of that Culver football team that had a good year as well. Yeah, and then again looking down here on your honorable mention list, this is another group of really good athletes yeah i mean this was a, this was a really good team i mean jackson baker from pioneer who you know a very good 800 meter runner chris Rohr from rochester a very good distance runner um who uh, you know was a I believe a regional qualifier in the 3200 um carson meyer from pioneer uh who was just maybe a step behind leighton dot on mm-hmm. uh, most of those distance races austin day from caston who was a very good 300 hurdler I mean, he was the second best 300 hurdler on his team but he might have been be the second or third best 300 hurdler in our area. I right. mean, he was very, very, very good hurdler. Xavier Vance from Rochester, who was a newcomer to the shot put, and was throwing like I think four, by 42 by the end of the year. I mean, mm. very good uh, season for him. Uh, Ian Kitchell from Pioneer, uh, a kid who was uh, again Pioneer's got just got so much talent. You forget about Ian. Yeah, the kind of great mid distance kid, middle 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 yeah. distance kid. Yeah, yeah. and uh, those kids are just invaluable for a track team. Landon Kikendall from Culver is another kid who had a very good uh, year in, in all sports. I think he was a regional qualifier in wrestling. Um, Cody Black from Valley. Uh, I'm really high on Cody Black in the sprints. I think he's going to have a very, very good football season coming up. We haven't talked about him as a football player that much. I think he's got a very good year in store. Uh, Grant Bailey from Rochester. Uh, 800 seems to be his best race, but yeah. I mean, he's. Um, I think he's under 210 already as a freshman. Again, that's a, an event that doesn't Freshmen don't usually do great in, but he, he had a very good year. Mm-hmm. And Coach Ryan Hall just raved about his competitiveness. Yeah, yeah, and very so it's competitive. Gonna be, it's going to be great to see uh, him and what he does in the future. Uh, Wes Steininger from Rochester, he's gone under um, under five minutes in the mile. A kind of an injury plague season, but really um, kind of had a good finish to the season. He's got one more year left. Um, Cameron Mason from Valley, another very good thrower, and we'll see him on the football field as well this fall. And uh, Reese Johnson from Rochester, boy, he came on in the distance races at the end of the year. And and that was really after a very strong finished across country season for Reese. Mm-hmm. Um, Brayson Smith from Valley, um, he is a hurdler. Uh, nice year for Brayson. Um, Trevor Wally from Rochester, he is kind of the next next big time pole vaulter at Rochester. And then um, Kevin Gluth from Pioneer. Uh, again, another guy who maybe gets lost in the lost in the shuffle at Pioneer, but again had a very good year, um, part of the very fast Gluth family. Yeah. All right, that'll wrap up our boys track team, and when we get back, we're going to talk some softball. Of course, a very good season for the cast and Comets. We'll, uh, yes, how many cast and players did we pick? <laughs> All of them, I mm-hmm. hope. <laughs> but uh, We'll talk some softball here when we get back, talking sports with Val. Mm-hmm. 
Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Since 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible, it should be customized to patient needs, it should strive for better health outcomes, it should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Welcome back here talking sports with Val, and uh, we're wrapping up our spring all-RTC teams, and we're down to softball and baseball. And for softball, um, I'm not going to say it was a no-brainer as far as picking um, – the uh, the winner of the All RTC Player of the Year because there was so many on that cast and team that were right. had great performances. But we had some conversations as the year went on. But by the end of the year, one yeah, player. I think, stu- I think it, it was up. pretty close to a no brainer, and that was Kinsey Mullen. Kinsey Mullen, boy, she just had an outstanding season, and uh, she was just a lockdown pitcher for them all season long, and and she could do it at the plate as well. Right. I mean, she just. As good of a player as she already was, she took it up another notch, and she was, um, you know, th- those performances again. I'll, I, you know, I'll remember the home run she hit against West Central in the sectional, which was, again, you look back at the game. I think they won ten to four. It makes it so- sound like it was a blowout. It wasn't a blowout. It was a, game, a tied game in the third inning. But West Central was beginning to feel that they were in the game, and she hit that home run. And then, you know, she had big hits throughout the postseason. Um, you know, she hit the two home runs against Fremont in the regional. Right. And then the way she pitched in the semi state was just incredible. Yeah, two games in that he I mean, it was just an outstanding day. Right. I mean she didn't I mean she didn't buckle against Kyle and even though you could tell she was getting tired. I mean mm-hmm. anybody would get tired. Yeah. But she just started relying more on her changeup. She's very just a very I mean, when you combine being really smart and really tough, that's a great combination. Yeah. And despite the loss, she played uh, pitched very well in the state championship game too. It was just a, a couple of errors actually that ended up costing them uh, a couple of those runs against Tecumseh. Yeah. So, uh, just an outstanding season, and you know the Huntington coaches have to be just over the moon ecstatic to to get her next year. And you know Joe Walker's going to be catching some of those uh, those games that she's pitching, so it's going to be a a fun. Uh, you know, it's almost getting to be Hoosier Northeast over there at Huntington. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of those uh, players moving on over there. So Kinsey Mollenkoff, uh, Player of the Year. And then how did you break this one down? We picked three, pitch, three, three pitchers, pitchers, three okay. catchers. We picked, uh, I think, seven infielders and seven outfielders. I know that's uh, – we'll, well, we'll continue to think about that moving forward. Yeah. Some might say – It's hard to pick three outfielders and say, you know, here's your best center fielder, here's your best left and right fielders. And, right. Some yeah. might say pick pick a couple more infielders and a couple fewer outfielders just because all the best players seem to play the infield. But uh, – we're making the rules up as we go. We're making the rules up, and hey, I was an outfielder in little league, so <laughs> I wanted to make sure that the uh, 
the outfielders got some love. But Dalen, but our two, our three pitchers were Molenkoff, Dalen Bussert from Valley, the yeah. ace pitcher on a sectional championship team. What a freshman year for Dalen. I mean, she just uh, she did, she does not play like a freshman. No, you can tell she's played a lot of uh, travel ball, and uh, yeah, she just does not look like a, you know, in stature as well. She doesn't yeah. look like you know normally your freshmen are a little bit skinnier, and you know she's she's got the the muscle to go with the uh, with the uh, ability. Right, and you know, I, I think I still think about that Rochester game where she gives up four runs and I think the third inning, and basically it was all because of errors. She basically she, then she shut down Rochester the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. A lot of players would have gotten frustrated and just gotten or gotten upset at their teammates. But Dalen is just so older mature. players that would yeah. have had trouble with that. Yeah, yeah, and shut down Rochester the rest of the game. Yeah, and then uh, Mia Hadashal from Rochester was our third pitcher. Uh, Mia just improved so I mean so much. We saw that kind of at the end of her freshman year right. and really carried over to her sophomore year. She was throwing with more speed. She was throwing with more movement. Yeah, uh, by the end of the year, and it's. Uh, Still have her for two more years. Yeah, I think the the thing that really helped her was her ability to place the pitches where she wanted to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I think she's added a couple of pitches as well to her repertoire. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, we I think from uh, from that Valley game, uh, her freshman year in the sectionals, uh, that was just kind of one of those aha moments for her, mm-hmm. and uh, she's really just uh, kind of kept improving from there. Yeah. Uh, catchers, um, boy, this is another one here. You got three really this good was, catchers. This was um, um, this was almost impossible. <laughs> I mean, this was we had three great catchers: Maddie Smith from Valley, Kylie Logan from Caston, and Casey Webb from Pioneer. My, my goodness, I mean, we we left off some good catchers, but uh, what a year Maddie Smith had! I mean, just mm-hmm. as a leader, as a I mean, as a as a hitter, as a game caller, as a catcher, as kind of the kind of the overall conscience of her team. I mean, Maddie was just, again, and we just, I'm such a big fan of hers and her attitude towards the game. And, again, Anderson just got a keeper in, in Maddie Smith. Yeah. Kylie Logan was another one. I mean, her contribution to that casting team and then also the ability of uh, Coach Burks to move uh, Isabel Scales out to short, you know, Wow, that just made you know a, a huge difference in in the way that team was able to to field, and she was a great bat too. Right, I mean, yeah, I mean, just as a hitter alone, I mean, the, she would probably be deserved. But uh, again, all the all the prep work that started basically when she was a seventh grader, just to get ready for her freshman year, mm-hmm. and have to catch um, Kinsey Mollenkoff and be able to, I mean, she kind of contributed to the game calling as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, Caston did not give up a whole bunch of stolen bases either. I mean, that was because you wondered about that. I mean, did, would she have the arm like Scales had? And but again, it it just worked out perfectly for them. And then you know, Casey Webb might be the best power hitter of the three of our three catchers. I mean, she was she's very strong. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, again, Joe Walker was a tough act to follow, but I think she's done a really good job so far. I mean, Pioneers had a long history of great catchers. Right. Right. And Casey's the latest. Yep. So, uh, and then here, boy, I, this one had to have been really, really tough because uh, your infielder roster, you have, you know, Emma Houdeschel, uh Isabel Scales, Addison Zippelman, uh, Christabel Blickenstaff, Kyla Coleman, Macy Hindelider, Ava Beasy. I mean, man, you put them all out on a field together, that is a team. Yeah, it's, they're beasts. Yeah. I mean, they're, I mean, and they could have, you know, I mean, Emma Hadashaw was hitting, what, over 700 most of the year. I mean, she I think she wound up hitting over 600. Um, Isabel Scales hit 15 homers. I think she was in the top 10 in the state in home runs. Um, Addison Zimpleman, you know, a great player. I mean, a leadoff hitter, a second baseman, a pitcher. Uh, I mean, and we, we've said. I mean, what couldn't she do perhaps, if you needed her to? Right. Maybe, I mean, who knows? Is she a Division One player? I mean, she's. Maybe she is, and I know she's played at the elite travel ball level. So, mm-hmm. again, uh, to her and Scales just have it as a one-two combo um, at, at the top of the lineup was just fearsome for most teams. Christabel Blickenstaff, she was not first-team all-conference, but she's first-team RT, all-RTC on our list. What a year she had. I think she had 450. I mean, she led the Pioneer in homers. She led Pioneer in RBIs, played a really good shortstop, and then stepped up and pitched when she needed to. But, boy... I mean, what a year she had. I mean, she had a she was just tr- tremendous. And then Kylie Coleman from Rochester again, I think maybe overshadowed a little bit by Emma. But what a year Kylie had. I mean, she was hitting over 500 most of the mm-hmm. year. She was. I mean, she went from being a really good player to being almost impossible to get out by the end of the year. 
and a really reliable third baseman as well. And uh, those two are going to be teammates with uh, Maddie Smith at Anderson, right? Right, right. Yeah. So. Macy Hinderleiter from Caston. We've talked about how much we like Macy. I mean, the speed, and then now she's added the power to as a power speed combo. And, yeah. You know, she embraced hitting ninth in the batting order, which was yeah. which was so important to Caston's success. And then Ava BC, you know, a really uh, again really tough out. And uh, again, she's got three more years left. Got um, can play, you know, first base. Very good first baseman. And again, here another reason why I see why you did what you did with the uh, amount of outfielders you picked. Because look at this list. I mean, you got Sid Hawes, you got Kylie Attinger, mm -hmm. Jocelyn Vincent, Corinna Styles, Bailey Harness, Aubrey Miller, Adeline Kripe. I mean, how could you narrow that down? Right. It was t yeah. It was really <laughs> tough. I mean, I mean, Sid had a uh, you know again she was another senior who upped her game. I think she'd around four forty for the year, and I mean it just seemed like she had most every big hit that they had on the season. So Sid was uh, a great, uh, really an, an easy pick. Kylie Adinger, um, really the, maybe the best slap hitter in our area. Mm -hmm. um, really, uh, you know, talking to her, I mean, she's she really. Uh, it's interesting. She talks about her hips and how she. It was really interesting getting the. She gave me kind of a quick lesson in slap hitting, which was really interesting. And <laughs> um, Jocelyn Vincent from Pioneer had a great year. Um, one of the better hitters on that Pioneer team played, I think, uh, mostly in right field. Um, Corinna Stiles from Valley, a very good defensive center fielder and leadoff hitter. Um, Bailey Harness from Caston, uh, again, um, improved her defense so much. We, we really like her for her defense on this team. Mm -hmm. And then um, had a couple, uh, three home runs on the year as well. Well, that play she made in that, you know, in, against Cowan, that was just, that yeah. was the difference right You're there. Right, that was a big out. Yeah. Uh, it was the second out in the bottom of the seventh. And then Aubrey Miller from Rochester, freshman who had never played outfield before. She's already played played infield and travel her whole career, had to learn how to play right field, and did a really good job. Yeah. And, you know, she's she's going to be the next really good slap hitter. But, again, she's played a lot of softball before, and you could tell she didn't play like a freshman. Mm -hmm. And then Adeline Kripe, a great, another great defensive center fielder. Somebody named Kripe that can play softball. That's yeah. almost unheard of. Yeah. <laughs> and and nice. a tough out as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, honorable mention list again. Another great list of uh, players. I mean, I would take them and, and go up against a lot of teams. And, yeah, this and is compete. a this is a tough team. I mean, Caden Boffman from Argus. I think she led Argus in RBIs. Michaela Costello from Valley can play a really good shortstop and is a very tough hitter. Molly Moriarty from Valley, good defensive second baseman, and again another tough hitter with com combination of speed and power. Um, Callie Watson from Rochester. I think wound up hitting like 380 on the year and uh, caught, I think, basically every inning of every game. Um, Annie Harsh from Caston, uh, first baseman, had a really good year at the plate, um, could hit the ball to the opposite field, and but could also pull the ball. Uh, Ava Stackhouse from Argus moved from shortstop as a freshman to catcher as a sophomore, had a very nice year. Um, Caitlin Conshot, the shortstop from Culver. Uh, MSL is from Pioneer, second base. Um, really, I think, really kind of refined her game. Maybe the best bunner in her area. Mm -hmm. um, Lexi Schenkel from Argus had a, I think she was first team all Hoosier Plains Conference, and we're we're on board with that. Very good player. Brittany Ben from Valley, left fielder, um, or, uh, could play or, or third baseman slash left. I think played a little out outfield as well, but clutch hitter. Always seem to have clutch hits for Valley. Uh, Miley Heinzman, the freshman second baseman from Rochester, um, really kind of provided some speed, but also some hitting, and she's a good, a really bright future. Um, can switch a switch hitter. Um, Dara Strasser from Rochester, center fielder, really good defensive center fielder, and really picked it up with the bat this yeah. year as well. Yeah. Looked a lot more comfortable at the plate. AJ Hines from Culver, pitcher, um, very good pitcher for Culver. Anna Shock from Valley, freshman, really bright future. Can play the outfield. Um, but really just improved to the point where she just had to be in the in the lineup every day. She was just that good. And then uh, Zoe Honeycutt from Culver, um, sophomore. And then uh, Manny Heinzman from Rochester came out at the end of the season and had, you know, really cut down on her strikeout rate, put the ball in play, really good, reliable defensive first baseman. And she'll be playing with um, Kinsey Mollenkoff and Joe Walker at Huntington yeah. and uh, Addie Harsh. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a great list, and, and trying to decide who's on the first team and who's on the honorable mention there had to be rough because 
there was a ton of really good softball. Obviously, started off with Casson and the success that they had, but uh, a lot of really good softball teams in our area this year. All right, especially with Valley winning the, winning their first sectional in 31 years. Rochester yeah. had a really good year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll uh, talk baseball here and wrap things up for uh, this uh, episode of Talking Sports with Val. Evans Agency is here to match you with the best insurance solutions that fit your needs. Whether you need coverage for home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency will make sure you have the protection you need no matter what life throws your way. With a heart and a hand for friendship, Evans Agency is here for you. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Timbercrest Senior Living Community in North Manchester offers services for all stages of life, including independent living, where you can maintain your independence, assisted living in an environment that will suit your individual needs, nursing and memory care for those in need of full-time care, Licensed professionals provide rehabilitation services, including physical and occupational therapy. Call to schedule a visit at Timbercrest, a place to call home. Say hello to a whole new world of growing possibilities with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Let the experts at Nutrient Ag Solutions help you realize the highest crop yield with the most sustainable solutions possible. Stop by their local location just east of Fulton or call at 574-857-3555 or visit online at www.nutrientagsolutions.com to see how Nutrient can help you. Community State Bank has maintained a tradition of service since opening our doors in May of 1930. For the past 90 years, we've been dedicated to developing personal relationships in all the communities we serve. Offering both personal and business accounts, Community State Bank is your local friend and neighbor. Stop by any of our local offices to set up your accounts today, online at csbnetbank.com. Welcome back here. We are talking sports with Val. We're going to wrap things up here with baseball and uh, yeah, there's a little bit of controversy. I don't want to say controversy, a little bit of uh, decision making there for us, uh, as far as who we picked as the uh, the the player of the year. But uh, we went with Rick. We went with Terry McLaughlin because I think just of his all around game. I mean, I mean his defense. Um, he was the best defensive shortstop in our area. In fact, I think he was just the best flat out best defensive player in our area. I don't think anybody at any position could play. Their position as well as Terry could play shortstop. Um, you know, he could move to his right, he can move to his left. He had really good footwork. And then offensively, I mean, he's just impossible to keep off the base because he's got a great eye, he's a great bunner, but he also can hit for power. Mm-hmm. He can hit line drives all over the field. I mean, he was just the tone setter, I think, on this on that Rochester team. Yeah, yeah. I remember when he hit that uh, home run there at uh, Bob Copeland Field out to right field. You're like, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah. And uh, he just he and had, then he did it again later in the year. Yeah, he had a uh, little bit of everything, and uh, you know this. Uh, oh this, yeah, and he was a good pitcher. Yeah, yeah. Well, you talk about pitching here. This is a, a great trio of pitchers that you had here on your first team with. Uh, Tanner Reinhardt, Aaron Huffman, and from Pioneer, Braden Erickson. Yeah, that's a pretty good staff. I would take that staff and and go up against a lot of teams. Yeah, I mean, both Reinhardt and Huffman had ERAs under two this year. Tanner Reinhardt, he went from, I mean, you could see the potential as a freshman, and he was just kind of this all-around player as as a sophomore. And, I mean, he again, not a lot of guys throw a slider and a curve. He's got a good slider and a good curve. And it, he, that just it makes it really tough to hit against. And on top of that, I mean, he throws hard, so you got to be, you got to adjust to the fastball as well. So it just, he's not fun to face at all. And then Aaron Huffman, again, he just kept getting better and better and better and better and better. Mm-hmm. And I mean, uh, you know, it was interesting hearing the kids talk about him, his own teammates talk about him, what a competitor he was. I mean, he was. I mean, he was very sick. That Manchester game, especially, was very sick. He, they weren't sure he was going to be able to pitch at all, and he winds up just dealing in that game. And uh, you know, I mean, he's just um, you know, kind of a kind of a sinker cutter type of pitcher. Totally different style from Tanner Reinerts, but just as good. Yeah, 
And uh, Brayden Erickson from Pioneer, he's just been a great pitcher for three years for the Panthers. Yeah, I mean, and he can overpower you with his fastball. He's got a great curveball. And this year was his best year with the bat by far. Mm -hmm. I mean, he really was one of our best hitters in our area. Yeah. And then behind the plate here, you got a, a really good list as well. You got Anakin Pettit from Valley. You got Jake Seifer from Rochester and Eli Miller from Pioneer. I think Anakin Pettit struck out three times all year. And I mean, you, you have to see Anakin Pettit play to really appreciate him of how he kind of runs the pitching staff and how he kind of works with his pitcher. And he's a great blocker of balls in the dirt, which is a huge, that's a huge part of playing high school, catcher in high school baseball. So he's going to go to Grace College. He's going to do a great job there. Jake Cipher, what a hitter he's he's become. Right. He was he was kind of a liability as far as hitting goes his first two years. Mm -hmm. He really stepped it up. Yeah, had just about as many, you know, had a ton of clutch hits. Can hit the ball all over. You know, he's more of a pull hitter as freshman sophomore. He's not going to hit the ball to the opposite field. A very tough out. I know he played Legion ball this year down in Kokomo. So really excited to see what what's in store for him as a mm -hmm. senior coming up. Yep. Um, and then Eli Miller from Pioneer. I mean, part of the reason why Pioneer was the surprise team that maybe surprise. I don't know if they were surprised. Probably wasn't a surprise to Coach Coach Hardy and his staff. But the reason why they stood out was his emergence as a catcher. I thought. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So your uh, your infield group, of course, uh, Tarek, mm -hmm. uh, Carson Pollock, a just outstanding freshman from Rochester. Right, and we picked Carson for the infield, but he's a guy who can play the outfield. And he was a very good pitcher as well. I mean, right. to, to have a freshman was that versatile. Yeah. That was really impressive as well. And then uh, Talon Zider from Caston, Noah Prater from Valley, Brayton Zink from Rochester, uh, Derek Duncan from Pioneer, and Caleb Sweet from Pioneer. Yeah, um, Talon Zider, very solid defensive shortstop, um, leadoff hitter, constantly on base, also one of the better pitchers in our area. Uh, Noah Prater from Valley, just solid as a rock at first base for Valley, um, one of the better hitters on Valley's team. Braden Zink had as many clutch hits as anybody on that Rochester team. Got it, started off the year in a slump, but was hitting over 300 by the end of the year. Had over 30 RBIs on the year, and then uh, you know a very had some good pitching performances toward the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, uh, Derek Duncan from Pioneer, very good defensive second baseman, clutch hitter. I think had had something like 27 RBIs. Very good player for the Panthers. Caleb Sweet, first baseman, pitcher, um, one of the better hitters in our area, um, and a, a you know. Kind of a kind of embrace that kind of that closer role or kind of that relief role in that pie on that pioneer pitching staff. Yeah, and then uh, outfielders, you had a, a really good group here. You had Bernicki from Valley, you had Jackson Kindig from Argus, Hayden Parker from Culver, uh, Ethan Medina from Rochester, Drew McKeg from Pioneer, Gavin Young from Rochester, and Hunter Kraft from Valley. Right, Marcus Bernicki had some arm issues this year, so he didn't pitch as much as we were expecting him to. But um, you know, I mean, he had a three-run homer off Tanner Reinerts. Yeah, no, not many people took Tanner Reinhardt's deep this year. Right. Marcus Bernicki did. Hayden Parker from Culver, another leadoff hitter, just a pest to keep off the base. Good speed, center fielder. Um, he's kind of, you know, the 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 Culver program. The start of their program starts with Hayden Parker. He's kind of the first step mm -hmm. in when what they're trying to get to. Um, Jackson Kindick from Argus. He was the Hoosier Plains Player of the Year. He can play. Mm -hmm. Um, outfield, uh, he can play outfield. He can play infield too. He's one of their better pitchers, but uh, we like him as a center fielder mm -hmm. and uh, was a very good player. Uh, probably the most experienced player on Argus's team by far. Uh, Ethan Medina from Rochester, center fielder, uh, clutch hitter. Again, you know he could also pitch a little bit. Um, very good defensive center fielder. Drew McKeg for Pioneer really came on at the end of the year. Um, kind of an unorthodox batting stance, but um, really had a lot of big hits for the Panthers. Um, but good hit, good hitter, good player. Um, Gavin Young from Rochester, a uh, guy who could play, I mean, he could play third base, but he played mostly outfield, mostly right field on this team. Um, just a really solid hitter, hit over 300 all year. Hunter Craft from Valley, speed and defense from uh, uh, out of the center field spot from Hunter Craft. All right, and then uh, again here looking at this honorable mention list, boy, that's a, a great group. It was very hard. To, Evan Myers, to leave him off the first team was very difficult. I mean, that might have been the toughest spot. Um, had a terrific year on the mound for Valley. Um, really, and when they really needed him to step up, um, he, you know, he, and he pitched a shutout against um, Knox in the sectional. Just really um, stepped up and was a big-time pitcher. Really loved the pressure situations. We love that about him. Noah Hurd from Caston. 
boy, what I mean, we saw him a little bit as a freshman. You can see the potential, but boy, he really blossomed as a sophomore. He's got that breaking ball now to go with his fastball. Really good player. Gavin Wallenkoff, the freshman catcher from Caston, can he, can he, just hits line drives all over the field. And on top of that, he's a really smart, heady catcher. Mm -hmm. um, Jake Erickson from Pioneer really stepped up in the, kind of that number two role on the pitching staff at Pioneer. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he and Sweet kind of went back and forth between pitcher and first base. Mm -hmm. Hunter Campbell from Rochester, um, again, had a great year, kind of embraced that closer role as a pitcher. Um, also played the outfield really well, great defensive outfielder and base runner. Cameron Manuel from Valley, first baseman and pitcher. Um, really had, again, another kid who stepped up on the mound for Valley. Uh, again, second place in the TRC. That was a great great year for Valley. We're really excited to see what Cameron does as a senior next year. Uh, Pete Duvall from Caston, um, pitcher, third baseman. Uh, had another really terrific year on the mound. He's, he's, he's tough to face because he throws hard. He's got a great curveball. Good broadcaster as well. Yeah, good broadcaster as well. Jonas McEwen from Culver. Um, he's, again, if, if Parker's the first building block, then the McEwen mm -hmm. twins are the second building block. Second and third. With 17 strikeouts in that sectional game against Triton. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is going to be a special player from Culver. He's got three years left. Luke Hunting from Rochester. Howard County um, MVP. Um, again, really solid defensive first baseman. Um, again, he hit seventh in that Rochester lineup. He did clean up on most other teams. Yeah. Cody Smith from Valley uh, had a really good year um, for for Valley. Really a good RBI. It seemed like he got better and better in RBI situations. Um, good defensive player. Caleb McEwen from Culver, but just like his twin, he's going to be mm -hmm. a really solid pitcher. Nate Manikowski from Argus. Um, I think he had around 300 for the year. Um, had a nice year. Got on base a lot. Um, Jackson Rentschler from Caston, left-handed hitting first baseman, really gave that that lineup some balance because they were overwhelmingly right-handed, but then you could throw in Jackson there, and that really kind of balanced it out a little bit. Um, a solid, solid hitter throughout his high school career. Um, Landon Bumford from Rochester, we wanted some defense on this team. So we're going to pick, we want Landon in, who really kind of emerged as a as a hitter. I mean, hit, mm -hmm. I think he was a better underrated hitter as well, a good yeah. base runner, yeah. just a good all-around player. And uh, Brenton Gomer from Pioneer is our last is our is uh, somebody else who made the team. Kind of had an injury plague the year, but when he was healthy, he was really good. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it here for our spring team. So we officially have wrapped up our spring season. So when we come back next week, we will, uh, like we said, we're going to do our previews for our fall sports, all of them except for football. So we're going to talk, you know, boys and girls soccer. We're going to talk volleyball. We're going to talk. A little bit more about the girls' golf season, and then we'll also talk uh, about the uh, boys' tennis as yep. well, yep. and cross country. Can't right. forget the cross country kids. So, yes. um, yeah, that's it. You got anything else? That's all I have. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. We will see you next week, and we'll, uh, like I said, preview all of the sports except for football, and get ready for the fall twenty three season coming up here as soon as we blink. Yeah. <laughs>